All right guys, so today I'm working on tuning up this old 64 Corvair and I got this car late last season and I really haven't done a lot to it. So today's task is gonna to be to get a compression test on it so I can get kind of a baseline set of numbers uh, moving forward. So um, I don't know, the way I go about doing this is probably wrong or I'm sure there's way better ways of doing it. Maybe you guys can help me out and, and teach me here. But uh, basically the way I go about this is pull the plug wires, pull the plugs, prop open the throttle, and then take the readings. So seems pretty simple. Um, let's just get to it and see what I can figure out. One. These are crazy little plugs. Three. Five. Two, four, and six. Okay, that's that. Next, start pulling plugs. And I found a small wobble Extension seems to help on some of these that are in a little bit of strange angle. I did put new plugs in it last year, so they should be in pretty good shape. But we'll see. I've had a few runs on them. Interesting to see what kind of shape they're in. It looks pretty nice, actually. done bled myself. I have a habit of doing that. I don't know how or why, but oh, there it is. Okay. Let's see if I can get in here. You know, the thing about having blood on one of your hands is you, you have two hands. I don't know. Use them both. We are fully extracted. Cool, cool. All right, so next thing I wanna do is hook up my starter switch. So I have this handy dandy remote starter switch. So I don't have to go into the cab and do my stuff. You know what? This little guy is not going to stop bleeding, so we're going to makeshift ourselves a little band aid with some blue paper towel and some tape. Okay, see? All better. No big deal. Nothing to worry about. It's all good. Where was I? Oh, yeah, there's a starter switch. Okay, so what I've got here is clampy clamp that goes on the positive and then a little probe that I've got hooked up from an old cable rig. 
And what I do is find the purple wire that goes from the front of the car to the starter and probe the back of it. Maybe probe the back of it. I gotta do it. Oh, and then well, she unprobed. That's okay. We're cool. And the other side goes to the positive. And what did I do this side? That ought to do it. Okay, where did my thingy go? Little button. Oh yeah, there it is. Okay, cool. So in theory, when I push this button, we ought to make noise. Hey, worked. Okay, cool. As you guys can probably tell, I have no idea what I'm doing. But you know, I feel like don't let that stop you. Have some fun. Get an old car. Turn some wrenches. Do a little bleeding. Have some fun. It's all cool, man. You don't got to be a mechanic. Just, just have some fun. Which is what we're doing. Okay, so next thing we're going to do. I've got this cool OTC compression tester. It's, I don't think it's the cheapest, but I don't think it's the nicest. But it, I think it does a pretty good job from what I can tell. I'll disconnect the gauge. We'll start on number one. Probably the end with the threads is the one that goes in the hole. Otherwise, it won't stay. That's just a guess, but makes sense anyway. All right, kind of tighten that down. We will do clippy on, and we're ready for our first test. You know, my switch is the same color as the rest of the stuff, so it kind of hides. I don't have that good of eyes anyway, but that's right. Okay, here we go. Okay, we topped out at 160, which I, th I think is good. Yeah. First hit looked like it was 30. Let's try that again. There we go. Okay, so that time we. 60 was our first hit, and 160 was the top. So I'm going to write that down. 60 and 160. And the reason I write the first hit down is because whether it's correct or not, I think I read once that your first hit should be somewhere between 40 and 50% of your total compression. So I don't know. Sounds like good science to me, so that's what I go with. And basically I take notes and keep my sheet with the data that I find and then I date it and I put it in the file. I keep a file on all my cars with uh, receipts and repair work and data that I collect so that I have a baseline and I can go back and you know look at the numbers later and see if that helps me diagnose problems or figure out what's going on. So and this is gonna be a little bit weird like the other stuff getting it in there. Come on, little guy. You can do it. Screw on in there, dude. Hey, here she goes. Happy at last. Okay. So that was number one. That would make this number three, if I can do my side-by-side -side math correctly. Okay. Lost the switch again. Here we go. All right, here we go. Number three. Fire in a hole. Okay, I see 150. First hit. Okay, I'm seeing 63 and 150. And that is number three. Sixty-three and one fifty. Okay. I think that's good. Nah. I'm not a compression scientist, but I think it's less important as to how high it is and more that they're mostly the same, kind of like how I think about reading spark plugs. But again, I'm just guessing because I really have no idea. I'm just having fun here.
right, so we've got number four, number six left. So this was the weird one. Let's see if I can get this in here now. This one could be a little bit of a trick, but that won't stop us. Oh my goodness, it threaded faster than the rest of them. That was cool. I'm not a doctor, but I think that's neat. Okay. Pop this guy on here. Moving right along, guys. Here we go. I've got my switch. I've got my gauge. Here we go. Fire in the hole. That didn't seem good. spark plugs trying to fire over here sparking away here we go so that's 30 40 so that's 40 50 60 so that's 45 we went 25 45 I think I might have just found the source of my running issue six 25 45 on number four 45 I wonder if that's just a valve that's misadjusted or something like that. Seems like it can lose compression. I don't know, but the rings could be allowing air through or maybe a valve that doesn't quite seal shut. Um, I did do a valve adjustment um, last year. Maybe one of them's too tight or too loose. I'm not sure which way would make that happen, but that is definitely not good. And I definitely had a running issue and that could be the source of it right there it definitely lacks some power and it hesitates at start and I bet that that could have something to do with it so that's super cool because you know it's it's neat when there's nothing wrong and you're just doing this for fun but when you have an issue and a problem and then you start diagnosing stuff and you actually have a problem that to point to a possible symptom that's really cool because then I maybe I have a chance at fixing something and I'm about as far from a mechanic as you can get. So, you know, for a guy like me, I'll take all of the clues I can get here. And then uh, number six, last one, guys. Hopefully this one's healthy. I got a gauge, it's zeroed, I got a switch. Here we go. All right, I got 70 and 150, which I super like. So, this is what I ended up with. And, you know, I'm gonna have to figure out that number four. It's definitely uh, got some kind of issue. The motor's only got like 60 some thousand miles on it, so I really kind of doubt that it's got ring problems. I have a feeling I just misadjusted one of the valves, but uh, we'll figure it out. So, that's my test for now. and. Um, I'll get this all put back together again and we'll move to the next step. So, um, hope this helps. I, I learned something here today. That's great. And, uh, and I appreciate you guys following along. So see you next time.